Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Exciting day in the world of video and photography because, well, mostly I guess in the world of video because we have the Panasonic GH5S coming. We've got the specs leaked ahead of time from Tech Radar. I was just reading those and some very, very interesting specs. I've, I've had a lot of behind-the-scenes discussions on this camera with other um, people, with Peter Gregg, um, with people at Panasonic, and uh, stuff I haven't been able to talk about until this point. But now that Tech Radar has released and leaked these specs, I can discuss what's been leaked. Now, when I went through the leaks, and when I was going over what has essentially been confirmed as the specs, uh, I saw seven major things of real, really of interest to me. So in other words, the seven things that to me make this camera interesting and something you might want to consider. Essentially seven things that make the GH5S possibly the new king of video. They may be the best option for shooting video of any camera out there. Let's get to it. I... Uh, as you can see, I made a handwritten list when I was reading through everything. And believe me, there's a lot more than seven things that are new in this camera, but these are the major things, the things that I felt make this camera potentially the new king of video, the GH5S, the new king of video, question mark? I don't know. It seems like it might be. A lot of people may feel that it is once this camera's out and been shot. Um, there's a lot of reasons. Number one, 10.2 megapixel sensor. Now, it's similar to what Sony did with the A7S, we, we have Panasonic taking essentially their 20, 20 megapixel sensor and saying, if we want to make a high ISO king, a camera that's really good for video and really good for low light, which is what we're going to want for video, we got to take put less megapixels on the sensor. Because with all else being equal, less megapixels is cleaner high ISO than more megapixels. In other words, if you cram fewer megapixels into the same size sensor, you're going to get larger photo sites and better light gathering ability and lower noise. And that's what they've done. So this camera, the GH5S, can shoot to a maximum of 51,200 ISO versus 25,006 on the existing GH5, which is still very good. But now we've got 51.2 available. And I've seen some ISO samples already online. This thing looks good, very good. Second to that, that goes hand in hand with that, is we have uh, Panasonic's dual native ISO technology, which is coming to us. It's been in previous uh, video cameras already, high-end video cameras from Panasonic, and it's pretty impressive. Now they're bringing this dual native ISO tech to the GH5S. Essentially what it's doing, it's giving us even better high ISO ability than if you didn't have this dual native tech. It's sampling from a lower shooting and a higher shooting. If I understand it when it was explained to me, that's what it's doing. So you might have it at 800 and say 6,000 something ISO. And it's sampling from, uh, from both settings in a, in, in a weird way, almost shooting at the same time uh, and in able to deliver a better image than if it wasn't using this dual native ISO tech. Basically in a nutshell, if you are shooting at, um, let's say ISO 800 and 5,000, the 5,000 ISO setting is going to be virtually identical for noise as the 800 ISO setting, which is pretty impressive. And this isn't just wizardry in the, in the, in the software. This is actually sampling coming straight from the sensor. So it's, it's really impressive technology. I've seen it, um, the results from it displayed on 4K TVs and it's pretty impressive. So this should be pretty, pretty neat, pretty impressive, um, results. And, and again, that's probably why we're seeing such clean high ISO in these samples we've seen is this dual native ISO tech uh, combined with the lower resolution sensor. Now, I should point out too that 10.2 megapixels uh, is, is no problem for video. If you're more of a photo guy, you might think that's, that's a little lower resolution than you might want. But for video, it's all you need. And frankly, it wasn't that long ago that the top cameras were shooting 10 megapixels. So it's, it's mostly all you need for a, a lot of photography needs too. So number three... Uh, on the list of seven, Cinema 4K at 60p. So Cinema 4K means we're getting a 4096 by 2160 uh, X and Y axis. So 4096 pixels on the long side by 2160 on the height. 
So it's a little more resolution than when we were getting uh, standard 4K, like I think they call it UHD, which is what, 38 something. So on the long side. So we're getting a little more resolution. We're getting full cinema 4K, which is, which is nice, at 60p. Number four, internal 422 10-bit files. So in other cameras, you can't even do 422 and 10-bit. And in some cameras, you can only do it from external recorders. And I'm not sure that the GH5 actually does 422 10-bit internally. That may be the big option over that. I'll have to double check that. But I'm, if, if memory serves, the GH5 would do this, but not internally. Uh, so that's a very impressive spec to get the 10-bit the, the um, file and to be shooting 422. So very impressive uh, for a camera to be able to shoot this internally as is. Number five, V-logs. They come with the camera now. They're pre-installed. With the GH5, you had to pay for an upgrade. It was like an add-on. It comes the GH5S has a V-log pre-installed. So another big advantage for uh, video shooters is to get the V-log at no extra cost. Number six, um, again, we got 422 10-bit video, but there's a 422 10-bit 400 Mbps, so megabits per second, all intra at 4K. Basically what this is is a super, super awesome codec. It allows for maximum uh, uh, information gathering, the least compression, you know, at 400 megabits a second, you're shooting at a very capable file. It's going to make for big files, but it's going to make for a lot of information. You know, you set this, you shoot this in V-Log at 422, 10 bit, 400 megabits per second, all intra at 4K, and you've got a killer file for grading and post-processing after the fact. Very, be very hard to beat this camera with all these specs shot at that um, codec, 422, 10-bit, 400 megabits per second, all intro at 4K. It'd be very hard to beat. It's going to be a very, very impressive file. You'll be able to push and pull it a lot and post. Just very impressive that you're getting this built into the camera. And then last but not least, number seven, we've got an improvement to the autofocus system. The autofocus system in the GH5S now is specced to negative 5 EV. So the GH5 was only specced to negative 4 EV. So we're basically getting another stop of low-light uh, focus ability. And this will be very interesting to see um, in, in real life. Um, you're always wanting a camera to be better, to have a higher number here. The higher the number, the better the ability to shoot in darkness, if you will. And negative five is better than negative four on the GH5. So um, definitely a good thing there. So taken together, these seven reasons, these seven major features of the GH5S um, are what I think makes it possibly the new king of the hill for video, the new video king. What do you guys think? Are you impressed with these features? Is there another feature that you think I should have included as a major feature that I didn't? Because there are, you know, there's more than this. Um, and what do you think in general of the GH5S? Um, let me know. Do you think this is going to be the new video king? Do you think it's going to be a big seller for Panasonic? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss the new Panasonic GH5S. I want to hear what you guys have to say about it, your feedback, what you think of the major new features, and um, always interested to hear the discussion that gets going. See what people, a lot of times you bring up points that I hadn't thought of. So looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.